different things that have been going on, scandalous and all. So right now we're going to do What's Your Tea and then we're going to start. Okay. Oh, what's the tea? Hi, welcome back. Okay, well my tea, um, basically, um, if anybody you know follows us, you know that we're throwing a wig drive. So I can't stress this enough, it's going to be my what's the tea until it's, you know, it comes up. The wig drive, you guys. You know, come support. Many few, many, many, many of us are going through, you know, life without wigs and without fitteds, and you know, and need some type of help and some type of visibility. March 31st, how's it works? Be there. And to all y'all girls that like to say that um, Miss G ain't shit and all this, I expect y'all be the first ones to um to support. I expect y'all there. So that's my tea. <laughs> Nicoletta, what's your tea? Well, I just. Finish uh, saving all my money for my surgery. Congratulations. Um, a full facial fam. Uh, I'm gonna get my breast done and uh, fat transfer, but I am gonna lose weight first because um, I gain weight because I was stressed out because I had to save a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. But um, instead of buying a house, I'm gonna be fixing my house first. And um, all right, congratulations. So all right. Well, I guess that brings me to my tea. Um, I have some news I want to tell people. Um, basically, a lot of people are finding out about this for the first time. Um, next month, I am going to be start taping scenes for as a new. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a guest, I'm gonna have a guest role on Eden's Garden. Wow! I just found this out yesterday. Oh, hi. And my mom acting chops and everything, so I'm really excited. So look yeah. out for that. So you're gonna get too big for the show here. <laughs> no, I'm still gonna do it. And for those who yeah. don't know, Eden's Garden is the all trans male series that was on. They were on the show last episode, so um, that's a good thing. Congratulations, Fox. Thank you. Thank you. What about you, Jai? You, you, well, you welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back since our last season. I know. What was it like a year or so ago? Yeah. Or, yeah. So I'm just going through life and just expressing myself beautifully and mm -hmm. if you don't like it, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's just life, you know, <laughs> staying fit and, you know, this year should come, come out some awesome fucking things and excuse my French, it's just... Yeah. But some awesome fucking things are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like working on some things. You don't want to really... Set. Right, yeah, but you're like, like, you're like really like working on them, so we'll see. We'll take awesome fucking things. Awesome. We'll take awesome fucking things. What about... Things. Things. What about you, Miss Ashley? With your um, I'm just here, you girl. You fabulous, by the way. Oh, really? You, you called look... me Miss Piggy earlier. Miss Piggy, Ashley. That's the real thing. That's what I told her. But Miss Piggy's fabulous. But that's the tea. That's the scandal behind tea time. But, um, <laughs> I've been fine. I'm blessed. I'm here. Um, oh, like Nicoletta, I've been saving, and you know, I want to work on the canvas and the body. So yeah. So Miss um, Chrissy, introduce yourself. Hey. Um, my name's Mercy Chrisette. Um, my nickname is Chrissy. You probably recognize me from a video that occurred not too long ago with an altercation on the A train. And basically it's been like a hard couple of weeks for me. So I'm just basically here trying to humanize myself yeah. and just show the world that, you know, I'm not the person that was portrayed. And that I'm really just a sweet person and you know, I love hanging out with my friends and just doing normal stuff. So. Alright, yeah, so welcome. Welcome. Yeah. 
welcome. So, and she's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> so basically, we're going to start off with um, the first topic. It's called misgendering and how we react to being misgendered. So, um, ladies, I don't know if any of you have ever been misgendered. So, I wrote your complete definition of misgendered is basically when you go somewhere and someone addresses you as sir, him, oh. mister. Why you dressed as a girl? Why, why, you're done? why you why are you're serving right. fish yeah. and someone deliberately <laughs> wants to out you. So, we'll start from this way and go around. Have you had a situation where someone basically called you out of your name, misgendered you? Yeah, I was at an Applebee's with my mom and we was eating. And she kept on asking, ask him first, what, what do you think he wants? And then the waitress took it upon herself to correct her. Your mom right. did that? Yeah. How did, you, how, did, how did you feel about that? I feel bad. I feel like, you know, you gave birth to me, you don't understand me. You're supposed to know me, you're supposed to feel me. Yeah. Like, you, you have me in your womb, I can't hold a child inside, so I help, you help me inside you, right. and you don't understand that I'm, I'm a woman. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, that's interesting to me, because I, I, I've learned that I've, uh, in my time dealing with other transgender people, a lot of trans people don't want to be called, you know, what they once were, which is perfectly fine, but I've noticed, especially in the urban communities, the only one allowed to call um, is is the mama. So I was, you know, yeah, I, my grandmother. Yeah, is the is the mom, you know, and the mom's the only one. The, the mom is mama grandma is the one exception that we allow, especially you know in the color, you know. Yeah, it's like it's like okay, you know, she'll always be, but that's always gonna be my heart. Right, you gotta be throwing you know, it But out. everybody else, you know, don't you dare. You right. know, right. 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 that's funny to me. I was like, okay. I felt like I would go outside and like the ki the kids are on the way. They were like. Pick a sex already because I used to go from boy to girl because I had a. You were gender non conformant. <laughs> so they were like, pick a sex already, so I, I made a choice. And and I felt like nobody was bothering me. Uh -huh. My mother had an issue with it. But then I said she had an issue and she told me no. So I was like, if you don't have an issue, what, it's so simple. I think I think all parents have. I feel like if you don't like me or you don't like what I am or you don't accept me, you don't have to be. You should respect me because if I respect you and I don't call you a spig or a bitch or right. whatever, or you know, right. or right. lo que sea, or right. disown you, because you know they always want to disown you when um, you could disown them. That's the reality. Yeah, that's true. But I, I'm not gonna stick up for your mother. But I'm just saying, like I think I it's know. harder. It's harder for our parents because you know they gave birth to us and they've known us for so long as one thing, you know. Yeah. So it, it's a it's a road to that, but um, I think it's worse when you get called out by people that are not that you don't know, you know, because they have no like they don't know how you're gonna react. My mother didn't like me when I was a, a boy, so I I felt uncomfortable as a boy. So are you and her more close now as you now. As, as a girl? Yeah. Why didn't wow. she like you? Um, she just wanted a girl. My father died, my father wanted a boy, so it was, she had no business with a boy. She was five months pregnant, she couldn't make, make the decision to get an abortion. Mm. So I'm here and I'm stuck in this world. So I'm just like living and just gonna go get surgery and make myself plastic. That's so awesome. she has a daughter now. Yeah. Yeah. A pretty one. That sounds <laughs> miserable. Girl. I need you to be a little more happier. I mean, just for life, period, bitch. Okay. And not only are you living life, but you get to live life in your utter truth. And you're beautiful. And you look like fish. Okay. You know what I mean? So I think be a little bit more happier. Yeah. I think she was just talking about the time. Uh, that, 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 sorry, oh, the time. Is that I, how you feel now? Yeah, you don't, you don't feel like that now, do you? Um, but you're kind of gender lips. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she put those lips in. I mean, I feel like, you know, it, it took for me to, like, get really big tits and all this and take hormones illegally for her to kind of look, like, to look at me as a woman. Mm -hmm. You know? She has to take you seriously. She's always going to see that banshee Hispanic boy okay. from the Bronx, from the Latin Kings. Okay. That's what she's always going to see. Amor de Rey, wow, okay. Sí, amor de Rey. <laughs> and also, um, I don't know if you want to mention this, but you were on Jerry Springer before, right? I was on it twice. The reason why I went on the Jerry Springer was because I wanted to basically let my whole family know that I was different. But when I went on the two times that I went on the Jerry Springer show, I pretended to be a lesbian transgender person because I didn't feel comfortable with the homosexual stigma that came with being transsexual, transgender. And, um, I mean... You say whatever you want to say, honey. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not gonna kill myself because you know some family members don't accept it, and I'm already here, and it's been years, and I've altered myself to the point that I can't revert back. 
Yeah. And I'm happy about that. that I'm happy about Did that. you ever feel that you wanted to retaliate? Because when I, I saw you on Jerry Springer, and did you ever feel like that you wanted to retaliate from what the audience was saying to you? You know, basically. I did because the audience they, they basically were there for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand that I was on the show because the show needed to make their ratings, and that's the reason why I went on the show. And I went on the show because because I wanted to use that platform for my prostitution because I used to work in the street corner in 43rd Street and I used to work in 14th Street and Burnside, Jerome, and all those places. How old are you, girl? Me, 33. She's at 14. 21. Yeah. So, Gia, do you have any um, examples of you being misgendered? Um, not as, like I, I said this before, not as much as I used to when I was younger. When you're younger, when you first start, it happens. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it happens it's to the best of us. Much. It's really it no happens shade. to the best it's of us. No shade. It really is no shade. But now, if it does happen, it offends me. Because there should be no reason. I'm older now, so there should be no reason. There's, it's just a, a respect thing. You know, I don't give a damn if it's Wesley Snipes in front of you. You see what I'm saying? I don't give a damn if it if it, if, if if it's Bricky, but if she is no shit. If it's, like no, cause it's let's be real. If if you're sitting in, if you're dressed a certain way, if you have a bra on and your hair is done, you're this and you're that, and you're constant, you're on like obviously trying to be this you know woman, you know. Kudos more to you, but what says for you to go ahead and say, oh, because you got the dirt, you can go ahead and call me sir. That pisses me off. Mm -hmm. That really does piss me off because it makes no sense. You took, you stopped your day to, to try to make me feel better because you, the reality is, because you felt some type of way of what I was living in my truth. Right. Either you thought I was sexy. <laughs> That's always the case. Yeah, either you thought I was sexy, you couldn't understand it. So, like, like, really, so the, your worst choice scenario was to say, Excuse me, sir. And I think that that kind of makes them feel better about themselves when yeah. they actually until they meet the right one, baby. I, I, no, and, and, and I've oh. had I've had the situation happen on the subway where I'm sitting still and a guy's talking to me, like hollering at me, uh -huh. and then someone else comes, a homeless man begging for change. Are his are his fat homie. Well, the homeless man begging for change, saying. <laughs> <laughs> with the change, excuse me, sir. Can you um give us some? Can you spare some change? Mind you, I'm talking to a piece of trade, but the trade already knows my dirt. I don't play that game. I don't want to waste my time with them. But it's crazy that sometimes they'll do it just to like play you because they, yeah, they feel better. About Sarah, it. Why are the homeless people, especially in New York, they always feel at their age they have a chance? <laughs> <laughs> they always did that A part first for me. That they have a chance with the girls. Or that they really do feel privileged over you. Yeah. I'm stepping and I'm really, and I'm not saying this to be mean, but sir, I am stepping over your living room right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the worst shit to say about me. And this is where it, it brings my mind to it like, wow, as, as the trans community, we're lower than the homeless people on the street. Mm. We're below the sex offenders and we're below the murderers. That's what they think. And, you know, I'm glad mm. you brought the, the, about the subway and everything. Um, I just want to just say that. I feel that sometimes we can be pushed to a breaking point to where, you know, we have to, you know, where we're provoked and where we defend ourselves. I remember a couple years ago, I was on the subway in LA and I had a group of boys that were trying to talk to me and out of all the boys, one of the boys got my tea. And he had to let everyone on the, the, on the train know, oh, that's a motherfucking nigga and everything like that. Hey, oh. you know, and, I feel that can mess with your mental. I yeah, it can mess with your mental. Especially if it's happening, like it can mess with you. Know you look over, and it's yeah. like really. And without going too much into it, you know, I, I can relate to you know people like you know Chrissy and you know people like yourself that you know on um, Jerry Speaker because of the fact that I had felt that rage and been you know been provoked because a lot of people don't understand that sometimes we as trans people we're passive, you know, it's just like that little dog. You know, that little chihuahua that's, you know, basically so uh, defenseless. You keep you keep pushing that little chihuahua, you keep pushing it with the sick. It's going to growl and it's going to bite the shit out of you. Any person, you know? yeah, any person. And, yeah, and... But like Jairus just said, um, last season, when you came, when you were on, 
you know, they see us, they see us as victims automatically, like, oh, let me get this sissy. Right. So it's like, sometimes right. they're gonna and gag. when you turn, when you turn, they're gonna gag when they must be Yeah, someone. when you turn right. on. But my thing is, I think all of the girls should simply be the wrong fucking one. Mm -hmm. Stop, I, I get so frustrated when I log mm -hmm. on or I turn on to uh, Facebook and there's all of this madness every single day. There's always in the groups that we're yeah. in. Oh, another girl got killed. Or another girl got beat and so on and so forth. And I'm just like, I'm so sick of us being victims. Mm -hmm. Like, the fuck that? Yeah, but like, I, that's why I commend point. you, mm -hmm. you know, what you said last on last season when you put up the hammer and mm -hmm. said, you know, if someone wants to try it, yeah. they can try it. Yeah. You know, because of the fact that you refuse to be a victim. I'm not doing you that. You refuse to be that's a victim. That's why I'm not doing that. You refuse to be a victim. You know, you refuse to be a victim. And I think that the more that we refuse to be victims and start showing people that we're going to stand up for, for ourselves, you know, people are going to start to get the message. But without going too much into... I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, I was going to say, like, last year, 22 transgender women, you know, that, that we know of. That we know of. Yeah. Of color. I think it's all about just basically staying alive mm -hmm. and just doing, you know, what we need to do to be alive, you know, because there's people out here that wants to hurt us. Do you ever feel like no you've been reason. provoked? Um, I have been provoked. I've been bashed in the past growing up. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and I mean, it sticks with you. It's just it's something that yeah. Oh, definitely. So yeah. when I when I walk outside, a guy could be trying to ask, "What's your name? What's your number?" I'm already thinking that he's gonna ask me, "Am I a man or a woman?" And, that was and, and men mentally, I'm I just ignore men because right. I feel like they're gonna spook me. I don't know why I have that. And sometimes they just want to come here. Same here. Are you the same way, same girl? Same it's it's same real. Here. It's just like they be it's cute like my heart. Be like, be like you know, I just want a day of just going to be a beautiful woman in the streets of New York. And no one asking me. And my girl. So if I if I if, if I give you that time and moment to talk to me, I'm gonna have either you gonna spook or I'm gonna have to let you know. And that moment, I don't know what your reaction is going First to be. First of all, when you're walking down the block and they're asking, can I ask you a question? I already know what you're going to ask me. Have you ever had that? Right. Can they I basically you see you and say, can I ask you a question? Your sweetheart, sexy. And then as soon as you stop, you think, oh, you are you a man or a woman? Oh, God. They ask me, can I suck your dick? <laughs> I don't have a drink, I have a pussy, and then he was like, oh, I'll suck your pussy. <laughs> I've had it before. Sometimes the right time, ask, I can deal with that. Okay, but if it's the right guy. Well, let me ask y'all this. I want to ask y'all, I want to ask y'all, all four of y'all this. Because, um, do you feel that, um, black transgendered women get, um, targeted more than any other, um, type of, um, any ra other race of transgendered women? Say it one more time, sorry, Do you feel that black trans women are more of a target than any other? I mean, granted, we're all a target, but I'm saying, do you think you, you as, you as trans women and as a black woman too, as you know, black, just in okay. general, you know, because as much as I can call and claim myself black, I'm not black. I'm Hispanic. You know, you see what I'm saying, right? Or you could pass as white for some people. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, like, I think, you know, do you, do you, do you think that it has something to do with it? Like, just because. There's so much, you know. I think trans girls, period, have it rough. All yes, over. yes, yes. But yes. I do think it's worse in the African American community. Okay. I mean, completely worse. Just off the back, when we're born, we're just taught that anything a part of this lifestyle is just people who never Absolutely. open. Right. It's people who even never open up a Bible, never go to church. Right. You're going to hell. So this is what's embedded in us as children. Right. Even within myself, this right. is just what it how I was raised, how my people were raised. Right, right, right. So, you know, I, I do think there's just so much ignorance in, in, yeah. in, 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 I, in being black. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know what's funny, and I, I don't want to sound like not um, stupid or anything, but I've noticed, because I live, also live in New York, as do all of us, you know, and I've never, I've had my altercations, nothing that serious though, you oh. know, nothing, you know, I've had altercations, like I said, you're, you know, you're not one of the girls, if you don't have your all, you have to, it's part of it's life, part of it's, it's part of it's it's part like part an initiation, <laughs> right, it's like an initiation, right, <laughs> but you know, um, uh, yeah, yeah, as I've you get older, as you get older, these things happen. Less than how long have you been in transition? Um, I've been taking hormones for about mm, three years. Okay, and so this is brand new to you. Yeah, well, you, not really. Cause I've been like you know dressing and living. Right. Like, You've been a girl all your life. You just started, yeah, like you know, since okay. I was young. But I started yeah. the whole like hormone process. But it's a different, it's a different mentality when you're pulling it on and off. You know, when you get clocked and you're not in transition, it's a kiki. 
they get up and it's just like the things they say. You just like it's it's whatever. Oh, when you make sacrifices, sacrifice, sometimes yeah. you feel like it's more devastating, right? Say it again. When you make sacrifices, because you said this one time last um, season that after you got your surgery, you had got spooked. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And it and it got you upset to the point where it's like after all that work. Yeah. And then it was like, fuck that, why would you take it, right? Like, mm -hmm. fuck, you ain't gonna spook me, I just got all this work done. Yeah. But it happens to the most realest girls. Yeah. Some, 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 some girls I, are too, they have too much pride. I think you're gonna have to accept school. in this lifetime, no matter how much search you get, you know, to the day you die, you're, so, you, someone's gonna get it. Someone. You can't fool everyone. Someone. And it's usually someone's gonna get it. It's, it's, it's oh, up to you. It's up to you how you and black women. Yeah. Black women. Yeah. I think so this, this is true. Yeah. Like, I guess for me, I had just stopped focusing yeah. on realness. See? Mm -hmm. And I started focusing on just bullshit. being who I was going to be, period, in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm so hardcore. Oh my God. Um, I can't put on makeup. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do that because it's not real. Right. You know, right. You, you know, a lot of girls you know, think that way. Right. You know, when, you're, when you are introduced. To being trans through the ballroom scene, this is what it is. Yeah. You know, if you have to put on makeup, you're not real. <laughs> Period, point blank. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you have to wear, you know, wigs and shit like that, that's not realness. That's not real so for right. a long time, early in my transition, most of my transition, it was just very being Shakai. The that's look, the ballroom, the ballroom, you think that. Right. Okay. So it was just box braids every single day, bamboo earrings, um, and lashes, and then lashes, and then lashes, and I'm like, yeah. 15, 20 minutes, including a shower, I'm done. Okay. Now it's like three hours, so when I stop focusing on realness, I'm just like, the, the, the vision I had for my life was a glamour girl. Yeah, just be me. Yeah. Period. <laughs> you know, so it was just simply like I'm not focused on realness anymore. I'm just focused on being who I'm gonna be when I walk yeah. out the door. As and if, you, as and if you see me as a guy, yeah. then you can see me as a guy. That's fine too. Just don't try me. Mm. Just don't. Just don't have a bitch you, girl. You already know. Let's go have. Wait, don't slam it on the table, girl. You already know I don't leave home without my peace, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the ones with rhinestones and the pink ones and so on and so forth, but you need a good nigga, a good old wait, hold on, a good nigga hammer. This is nothing. When I pull this out, it's not going to be. Oh, that's what I went to it. Yeah. I so, think there's like a. What you say? <laughs> you think I, there's think a there's, I think there's a stigma when it comes to like, cause even real women, you know, make makeup and wear makeup and wear wigs. So, yeah, look at the whole cast of Love and Hip Hop. Exactly. <laughs> well, see, yeah. that's that's today's. The, now that's today's women. Yeah. Remember, we were all trying to analyze ourselves after today's women then. Yeah. And yeah. today's men, women then didn't want wear makeup. They didn't like want the, the men didn't even want their um, yeah, women to make up. So nowadays, when you turn on the, the radio, I'm sorry, on the TV, they're the bad bitches everywhere. Yeah. The girls right. have like this, yeah. bundles, and And using our lingo. And using our lingo. Yeah. So now it's easier than I, I'm finding it now because of that. It's easier for the girls. Yeah. Well, it's easier for me well, to the be. Men, the men are the men. acting biological females are they transsexual? That, well, and that's the real thing. No, but more importantly, it's just like it's easier for for me as a trans woman. It's just like now this is they live. Because that's what the men lust for. Right. They want us. They want a want 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 girl. They want a black China, right. a Amber Rose. I think I really honestly think is that they've lusted it for for us for the longest. And oh, I think yeah. if it's anything, it's the females that caught hip to it and said, "All right, bitch. They like all this to look like a thought. You right. know, it's to look it's well, to look like." Then they turn around and read us for Phil. Right. I mean, you want to you want to fashion yourself after the girls. You know, but they keep you out the You know, the bodies, the, the waist trainers, the surgeries, the fat graft thing, the lashes, the lashes. But then the girls, that's it's more importantly fucking the brows. It's for women, period. <laughs> okay. Like, you know, what is the waist trainer do? I'm sorry, it's in the thing. It's a, it's a, oh, it's a, 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 so wait, does it make it like does it, it squeeze it uh, squeeze it Wait, well, isn't that the one from Felicity Nora? Um yeah, this is from this is um from Felicity Nora's um collection of snatched and laced. She's a trans woman from Atlanta. Yes. Yes. And, and that waist is snatched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, like, we're gonna like get some snatch. So it's like a girl. Wait, but can you can I tell my story about the first time I pull had to pull out my hammer? Oh yeah, please do. Or even why I started carrying the hammer. Okay, okay, let's get to it. So, I had, this is a couple of years ago, I had just moved to Harlem, right? I love and, the story. Right, I, I, I give a good story, right? Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm known for. So, I just moved to Harlem, and maybe like within that first week is when they killed 
I um Islam. Islam met a net. And so it was about maybe like seven blocks away from there. Mm -hmm. Now I've been a bold girl my entire transition. I generally just don't care. If okay. you try me, I don't mind tussling, which I have six brothers, we fight. This is what mm -hmm. we've been doing all our lives, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I don't mind getting down with the get down. So I would always just have mace and then I had a, a taser. Mm -hmm. Or when I drove, I had my car. If you tried it, I just ran into the crowd. <laughs> That's happening too. That's another story now. So, <laughs> I've done that before. So, right, so, and as they had that situation happened for the first time in my transition, I was very nervous. Mm -hmm. I'm in a whole new world. I, I'm, I'm born and raised out in Long Island. I lived in Queens for a while. And now I'm in Harlem. I don't know anyone. I don't know what's left. I don't know what's right. I don't know. The people don't know me. I'm nervous. Because they didn't They didn't shoot her. They beat this girl to death. Yeah. That makes it scared. The thought of that scared life out of me. Like, can you imagine going through that? Yeah. In front of a police station. Right. Left, at, the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the precipice of the, at, at the police door. Like, this is, it scared me. So one day I was carrying the, the taser, but I had forgotten to charge it. And then I had Googled the particular one I had. It wasn't going to take a, a dude down. It was just, it was just really a noise maker. So yeah. You so wanted something from not I need something, out. right. So I just moved there. The house is, the apartment is all, you know, just moved in. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, I forgot to charge my um, taser. So I look at the hammer. So this is one too. So I put it in my purse. It's been in my purse ever since. I'm like, this is what it is. It's heavy for my bag. But this is what it is. So one day, where I lived was off of the one train, um, City College. And if you get off that stop, it's at the bottom of the hill where I lived was on Amsterdam at the top. Straight, mm -hmm. from hell straight to heaven. So, I just this is when I worked at Mac. And I just worked a long day, you know, mm -hmm. retail, I'm on my feet. I'm just, yeah, right. I'm on my feet. So it's summertime, about five o'clock. Mind my business, because that's what I do. I mind my business in New York City. You know? <laughs> so I'm walking. Yeah. Right, mind your business. The big still try They it. always yeah. try it. Because exactly. they always are. Because I mind, seriously, mind my business. I'm never looking for trouble. So I'm walking up this hill. I'm minding my business. It's hot, middle of the summertime. And I walk past these three Spanish boys. I'm just moving on, not even a week there. Moving on, and I pass them. I get about three or four steps down. I all this, like, bag it. Da, da, da. I'm like, for that second, a lot of things ran through my mind. I can keep walking and continue to mind my business. But then I thought about it. If I keep walking, that means every time I walk past them, and this is the quickest way to this train station, it's going to be some shit. Yeah. And I just can't have that. I'm not going to allow you to make me feel some type of way from my house to the train. I'm not doing it. I'm not going around the block. It's yeah. not how I was raised. Right. So instantly I turned around. One of me, three of them. Do they always hang out there? Yeah, you know the losers. Yeah, they're all like, you know, 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 What's the motherfucking hoo-ha? But at the time, I'm talking with the hammer. What's, 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 how y'all feeling? How's everyone doing? Y'all alright? <laughs> That's my famous question. If I have to pull out, y'all, how's everyone doing? How's your mom in here? They good? <laughs> you gotta act you crazy make with it right. Dinner. Right, so, you know, my thing is this. I saw, I'm, I'm, at some point, you and I were, this is what I'm telling them, at some point, you and I were face-to-face -to -face together. Eye-to-eye. -to -eye. So if you had anything to say to me, you could have said it to my face. Exactly. Exactly. I can't respect your manhood that I got three or four suits up and then you want to start yelling. Shit. Sometimes they want to show off in front of the friends. Right, but they had the right one on the right day, honey. Okay. Yeah. So oh, they catch you in a certain amount of time yes. when no one's around. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're talking back and forth. I said, I'm able to put my shit back, you know. Mm -hmm. So I started to walk away. As I'm walking away, someone said something else. I didn't hear what he said, but instantly I turned right back around. Because <laughs> we're not going to do this. We, we, need to figure, we need to figure this out. We need to figure this out right here, right now. But it set such a tone right then and there that I'm not the girl you want to fuck with. All right. So yeah. every time, the entire, the few years I lived there, every single time, of course, every single time, no matter what the season was, when I walked out my door, I bumped into them. Now I'm walking through them. Excuse me. Unbothered. Waiting to hear something. No one said nothing. Yeah. No one said nothing from that moment on. And I feel like if I didn't act out with my hammer, I would have had to deal with all of that fag shit. And it was Spanish? They were, yeah. There's was always the Spanish ones. Well, see, I've never experienced that. Before. Really? Yeah. Oh, I've never yeah. been trying to go back to really But before we. Yeah. Like I said, I think it's different, different, different girls different have different, 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 different girls. Yeah. 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 But you know what? I, I think this is what mm. she was going to bring up the racial divide because yeah. there's a racial divide going on between trans women and 
there's some tea, since this is a scandal episode, there's some tea that we want to talk about. Um, so basically, um, one of our sisters from the show, Miss Cherno Biko, she had started, um, you know, um, a hashtag Black All, Tra All Wait No Black Trans Lives Matter, and a lot of girls were offended by that because they feel like it's dividing the Spanish and the you know Black trans girls. So um, Mariah Lopez actually made a video, and so um, you look at right now. I respect all the work that you do, but I feel like sometimes I'm turned off by the movement that just singles out saying black trans lives matter because I feel like all us all as trans coming from different backgrounds, we all go out and face the same dangers. So I feel like why is it that we're sending the message that black trans lives matter? We're not sending that message. I'm sending that message because I am black and I disagree that we do all face the same dangers. Much how you talked about the privilege that white folks have, mm -hmm. you carry privilege based on your proximity to whiteness. So let me be clear about something and I never named the girls by name and this truly controversial shit I be doing but guess what? Miss Cherno. Miss Cherno. Hunties. So Sylvia's best friend was a black trans girl. Woman named Marsha. Sylvia don't didn't play those games about separating us by color. Trying to separate our experiences is also stupid too because if you think a Hispanic trans woman doesn't go through the same shit that an Afro-Caribbean trans woman does, you fucking stupid. So I'm calling out every trans fucking person that thinks that there are subtle differences in the nuances between our experiences and we need to explore them differently. differently. Fuck you. We all go through the same types of oppression, particularly if you are of color, Hispanic or not. But white, white trans people too. Are you fucking crazy? Sylvia lived with two trans women that were white that created the new star house that treated her better than any other fucking person in the community. Perhaps, Cherno, you should read the book Skin Deep published by my professor, Ph.D. Derek Horton. And, it, and in this book, it breaks down that people of color discriminate based on skin tone. Skin tone. So we are as racist. Anyway, I think y'all bitches get the gist. If Cherno didn't see this video, make sure one of her girlfriends tags her and taps her and makes her watch it. Because I will be at Creating Change. I've already got my ticket. Deuces! What I, I I feel that she what she means is that it shouldn't be a divide. It really should just be all for one and one, you know and one for all. You know, um, but it's not like that. I have to see the rest of the video. I didn't catch really much of the whole video to see what she is. But you know, we know this lady has a controversial. We to those who know this lady, she is in, does like to start you know controversy. That's what she does. You know, and to those who know Biko, you know she you know she's a. Uh, 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 was an activist that works, you know, in Washington, and she's for she's for the girls. And I don't think there's anything wrong with her having a separate, you know, because the reality of it of it is is that it's like we were just talking about a little second ago. It's like I think the black girls have a little bit, you know, harder. You know, don't we all have the same hardships? But the fact that we're in a uh, white America, you know, is is. It's like a double whammy. It's like, you know, it's one thing to be African American and have that struggle, and then it's another thing to yes, be transgender yes. as well and have that struggle. Yeah. And so it's just, it kind of feels like you're fighting two things at once. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, no, the, that's exactly, I'm sorry to cut you off. My mom had said that to me and my girl, like my, the, like within that first year of transition, she said, you, out of all of my kids, have it the worst. Mm -hmm. She said, for one, you're black. and our world, you know, what, what it was at the time. She said, for one, you're black. Two, you are gay. That at that time I identified myself. Strike two, right. right. That's strike two. She said, three, now you are a black man becoming a woman. Strike three. So she said, so now you have to walk, you have to work three times harder than any of my children. Mm -hmm. Which is true. Which was true. You know, I have Spanish trans girls that I consider family. And it's much more accepting in, in their family and their culture than, than, than ours. Yeah. And then you know, on, top of, you know, on top of that, and our and our community, we're just really fucking ignorant and nasty, and we feel privileged, especially the men or the women. Period, feel privileged to voice their opinions in such a disrespectful way. And um, in like Spanish countries, we they kind of like they find us a key. Like we're like 
you know, like there's always one of the girls in a soap opera. We're like comedy for them. It's like like um, uh, Walter or Pablo. Um, he was the yeah. he does the the horoscope. Yeah. Oh. And he's a big queen. But he, but he was a queen though. Exactly. He a, but he looked he was androgynous. Straight. So gender nonconforming. He was. He was. Yeah. No. So basically, they praise the girls because they find us as a joke in Spanish countries. He like, he was gender nonconforming. Not wow. Bring that. Oh my God. You had white Walter. Oh my God. Walter was strategist. <laughs> well, Walter Mercado, yeah, and but honestly, that was like the first what I thought Tranny Iris thought. That was like the, that's the Latin RuPaul. Right. <laughs> no, Sandy Abu was the but right. But like back RuPaul. to her, this young lady from the video, you know, like I, I can't always take her serious just because I've seen her a few times at a few different functions just act out. A mess. And a mess. she's very another trans girl. It was just like girl, all of that. Some really. people are passionate about what they say, and that's fine. The delivery too. is not. Well, the delivery of yeah, you know my right. But you know, this is the same woman that said that Laverne Cox is not transsexual because she's just the fact that Laverne Cox has a penis. So, so is she basically so yeah. Like, how does so, that? How does that? You know, she's even just she, you she has a vagina. And like, it's just bottom line. Like mm, I know. never, I never got an inkling for free, but I wouldn't say because somebody has a penis. Or vagina that, that makes them uh, less trendy. Yeah, or like uh, inhuman. Well, some girls get sex changed and they look down on the girls. They feel like, oh, you're this a fag true. still, but this then is true. they're How? still dating in the same pool as the girls with dicks. With it, yeah. And you're still living the same fucking struggle, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Thank to you. No difference. And I'm not saying and I'm not really because I. No, bitch, like, say it's okay. In the last like, month, I've had two or three girlfriends that have all literally, like, within one week to the next have gone for uh, the surgery. Yeah. So, and, you know, I don't want to say anything to like come for them, but the girls that I've known prior to them, it was always that same attitude. Like, you know, you're a faggot because you have still have a penis. Mm. Girlfriend, I think they get frustrated you, you because they feel like, two days. You know a lot, that, a lot of girls get the sex change and things don't change for them. You know, because they get it for the wrong reasons. They get it thinking they're going to meet a man who's not going to know their past and they're going to live after, happily ever after. And it's not the, the that's a that's a false reality. And that's not going to make you a woman just because you got a vagina. Exactly. You will be female, you would never be a woman. You always going to be transgender. Yeah. You you you'll be a woman, video. but you'll never, never be female. female. Excuse me, that yeah. was backwards. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. That was the correction I needed. Yeah. I was like, wait, I'm I don't know if I agree with that. No. <laughs> but how does the bird scratch that reverse it? How does she identify as? She identifies as trans. She does. Yeah. Yeah. So she identifies as trans and that's to be what Long it before is. she her fame came, this was a trans woman. Yeah. yeah. Period. Like and a lovely one at that. I, I mean you know, and I feel like she represents I, I feel like she represents us pretty dope. In a pretty yeah. positive yeah. way. Yeah. Right. So, so basically the thing was is that um Mariah basically said that, you know, Sherno was dividing the girls based on skin color and trans experience. So basically girls with a, a lighter skin color has it easier. So what do you girls Girl, think that, about that's that? Gone, that's gone, that's been the same since slavery. Yeah, okay. And I'm not sure that it'll ever change. So there is a divide. It, it, but this is not something that it's like, okay, this is what we're doing in our community. This is just what it is. Yeah. And the because there's, there's racism in our in, in 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 black culture period period because the lighter because skin was always celebrated. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know the dark the dark skin girls we're just now getting our life in the past five. And Cherno actually yeah. said on this on this very show that she feels that black trans women have it um, worse in that Lat Latina trans women you, um, have it much easier because of their proximity to you know light skin and whiteness. Now I. Mm, somewhat agree with that and yeah. I somewhat disagree with that uh -huh. because you can't really be in anyone else's shoes to tell uh, the next girl you yeah. know, but the white, the white, most most of the white trans are the ones killing themselves so okay. what does that say you know we we kind of just take it you know we're, we're just a lot, of, a lot of white people that transition to become women they have a lot to lose and they don't they don't have the same upbringing like you know we come from oh, sometimes like, look at Gigi Gorgeous she transitioned then, you know, with, with yeah, the help of her family and their mother their, their father pays this. for the surgery oh you yeah, know see some people have it easier well, oh they yeah transition, and then the parents and everybody the family just disowns them takes away their money and they've never been in that situation that we're a, a Growing up in rough neighborhoods, so, like we so have to just they have a lot to lose, so they end up committing suicide. It's not that they want to commit suicide; it's that they cannot 
move to the ghetto. They cannot go to that uh, to that shelter with all the Spanish girls and all the black girls. Why not? Because they're gonna be like, look at this white privileged slut. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And the thing is, like, white people, and I'm not even like piggybacking back, you know, piggy piggybacking yeah. for them, but a lot of white transsexual women go through a lot of stuff, but they don't talk about it because they're afraid to talk about it because they don't want to be uh, ridiculed or say, you're just saying that because you want to be a part of it. But I have friends that are white that have been beat, raped, um, have contracted HIV AIDS due to being raped for being transgender. So and basically, bunch of you all, have no matter friends, what race you are, if you're trans, friend, you gotta do yeah, a lot of My stuff. friend, uh, Carmen Victoria White, was killed because her cousin disclosed her Gender to the guys that were in the house, and they shot her, and they killed her. She was beautiful. She was a and she did trans- not like black people. She hated herself for being black, and she was a beautiful black woman, transsexual. Oh wow. She was. She got killed. Is that the girl that got killed in Jersey? Yeah, and she had sex change and everything. I think I heard about her. And she was beautiful, and she worked really hard for what she did for herself. But you know, all that self hate eventually she ended up getting killed. Well, no, own people. I, I wanted to just wow. sh- shift gears just for a second here. I was um, basically, um, I, I will take full credit for this. Um, basically, for some of you that don't know about the Secret Girls, Secret Girls, um, here's an excerpt of the Secret Girls and who they are. I was a liar, I gave into the fire. I know I should have fought it, at least I'm being honest. Feel like a of the Secret Girls. Secret Girls was a very short-lived transgender um, music group that um, basically were destined to be the first pop transgender um, pop group. Featuring one of our ex-castmates, Elite Luciani. Hey, um, she actually was in Tea Time on um, Teal Streets and basically we sent her off to Secret Girls and basically she was returned to sender. Yeah, <laughs> there's been a lot of tea with this because you know what? Every, 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 you know, Nikki Exotica, you know, shout she out to her. She was the founder. She was the founder. And the manager. Yeah. And the choreographer. She did everything for the group. She did. And, I ain't never um, tried to send up. No. Yeah. <laughs> brought me the ghetto. But the fact of the matter is, is there's, there's been a lot of tea because since they broke up, you know, we've had girls, you know, former members that have agreed to do um, personal interviews, but they've been dropping like flies, you know, and due to legal issues, you know, a lot of girls have been, you know, afraid to talk. So, right now, we actually have a girl that we're going to do a video chat with that was a former member of Secret Girls and try to get the tea on what happened. So. <laughs> Inspector Gadget. Listen. We are, we are actually calling Raquel to see. Uh, oh, it ended. Mm, shade. So, we. I, I made an attempt time. to call her. Try one more time. Try call her Could one you more block time. a number on Skype? Could you block it? I'm sure you can. So basically, a lot of girls were scared to basically come forward and talk about it. It's sort of like um, the Church of Scientology. Yeah. Where, where you, the members who leave the church, they cannot talk about the church. So um, basically, the reason why the whole secret girls thing didn't work out was because Nicole only cares about herself. She doesn't want to see anyone else prosper further than she can. So it led me to believe that the whole secret girls group thing is a gimmick to get her foot in the door in the entertainment industry as we all know that that's something that she struggles with. Um, And um, so basically, uh, my side of the story is um, I went out to LA and um, for the sole purpose of auditioning for the group, 
and um, I auditioned she liked me um, and I was put in the group but she wasted no time to let me know that my position was um, it wasn't solidified because she had already known another black girl who was um, apparently more who had the uh, I don't even remember how she worded it she basically said that the other girl had her sex change she had more work done than me and that she was basically more of the package that she was looking for in um, comparison to me because I have very minimal work done like I've only had my breast done and that's it and um, and uh, so she told me that well you know I like you you're in the group but um, when you uh, I'm gonna audition my other friend and you know if she kind of gives me more than what you're giving then I'm gonna pick her instead of you the thing is that like the thing I had an issue with um, was she I had already been to like many rehearsals so I've already put in the footwork and she's already um, putting this other girl that has never been to one single rehearsal against me and saying that if she comes through and she, you know, I don't know, because she said that she couldn't really sing very well, but she was the whole like package looks wise um, that she could basically take my spot in the group. So I didn't feel very good about that you know and um it didn't make me feel like she valued me as a member of the group and um so that was one of the things that kind of made me feel like okay there's there's something about this person that i don't really like you know already and this was i had it's already been like a week only since we met you know and i'm already feeling a certain way about her if Nicole is the leader of the group then she should act like it but she it, I don't know like she likes to boss people around she likes to make people feel inferior to her she likes to make people feel like the only especially in this group she tried to make me feel like the only way that I was gonna get anywhere is through the group she said you're never gonna get an opportunity like this ever again and I said really <laughs> because I've been making music long before I even met you like you've been making music or whatever you've been doing for the past 20 years and you're still trying to get the ball rolling I'm just getting started so don't worry about my opportunities okay because I saw this whole thing as an opportunity as itself like I, I, I saw it as an opportunity to say hey listen I am a transgendered woman I would love to be a part of a transgender group to send a message out to anybody out there who is talented and wants to pursue their dreams and doesn't want to resort to um, you know sex work and whatever like we we're all tempted with that and a lot of us work in that type of industry because we feel like that's the only way that we can get somewhere. But I feel like being a part of the Secret Girls was a message to say that we don't have to do that and we can follow our dreams and, and become something that we want to become. Um, but the issue is that Nicole doesn't see it that way. She, I feel like she's using the group as a come up for herself and not necessarily for the rest of us because she didn't see it for us. She didn't see it for me or Jasmine. You know, she always had something negative to say about the both of us. And um, and you know, like if if you're gonna be a leader of group of of, of a group, you you can't. That's just not the way. It's just not gonna work. So now that you know, she went and did the whole. You know, she got a whole group together. And it didn't work out I'm really not surprised like I'm really not surprised because just her attitude is just really difficult to be around you know she doesn't make you feel good when you're around her because she's always got something condescending to spit some something condescending <laughs> something condescending to say 
and she has a superiority complex and it's like her way or the highway and she feels that you know she has an excuse for that type of behavior because Madonna acts that way and um, who else Lady Gaga or whatever you know she compares herself she compares herself to these great musicians and iconic pop stars and whatnot and I'm just like but you're not them you're not Lady Gaga you are not Madonna you're not Britney Spears so you have literally no right to act like that you have literally no right to feel superior to anybody because you have not accomplished anything to uphold that superiority <laughs> and you know I don't know that it's just that's just how I feel about the whole thing so I'm not surprised that the whole secret girls thing didn't work out for a second time and um I guess that's my side of the story. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Um, I really wish that I, I was actually hoping that it would work out, you know, for the other girls' sake, you know, because we, I guess we all share the same dream and that's, that's basically it. Hi guys, my name is Alyssa Brooks. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I am a former secret girl. Um... When I first joined the group, I was kind of hesitant to bring up the idea of me potentially being um, a possible replacement for one of the members that had just decided to go um, her separate way. Um, I didn't realize that the group that I was coming into uh, needed so much work. I didn't realize that the group needed uh, more than management, more than a leader, it needed structure, and it needed um, a lot of things for it to function properly. And I was not under the impression that the group was in such need of a lot of help. And throughout that time, we fought quite a bit. Um, our personalities began to clash, um, never with Jasmine or Elite and myself. It was always with the leader of the group. Um, she constantly was hard on us, um, which she had a good reason to be hard on us because we, you know, were supposed to be under her watch. And, you know, I, I understand how one person telling you what to do can become a little tricky. Um, but we, our biggest issue was not being appreciated and always being torn down. Um, we were constantly giving all these, um, we were constantly given all these underhanded, you know, comments, um, from the leader. We were always being, um, put down indirectly from the leader, um, there was a lot of times where financial situations came up where the leader at one point was wanting to take 15% from everything um, because that's normally what a manager gets. Uh, it's 15%. Then uh, the leader wanted 20% and then 20% turned into 40%. And then eventually towards the end, uh, the leader was getting 50% of everything that we were making leaving um, Jasleen, Elite, and I to split 50% among us three. Um, you know, a lot of the money situations uh, were not really right. Um, a lot of the things that we were doing were costing a lot of money, which was putting us all in debt. Um, it really was not a good situation for us all to be in. Um, once the, the group was broken up, is when things started to get really messy on the leader's behalf. Instead of being a professional and instead of being, you know, honest and direct towards the group members, she chose to be malicious and um, play the victim in this whole situation. She chose to go on social media and pretty much tell everybody that it was our fault that it did not succeed instead of taking... Um, 
responsibility for your project and your group and your baby, you know, it didn't succeed because of you. Um, I feel like she blamed us for uh, whatever she couldn't do. And that to me, unfortunately, did not sit well um, when she started to uh, say comments about me and the other girls. It just didn't sit well with me because we hadn't said anything. Um, we, we hadn't said anything. You know, I'm, I'm not just going back to doing drag shows. I have a lot of stuff that I do on the side. Um, it's not just, um, performing, which is what something that I love to do. And about 70% of the trans community are performers. So... I, I didn't understand where these comments were coming from, um, from our supposed leader, um, because we all really did look up to this person, and we chose to trust this person to take us to a certain place that we, you know, didn't feel that we could do on our own. Um, we never stopped working. Um, she chose to abandon us. We, we never abandon her. We never gave up on her. And um, I feel like now, once everything has now gotten to a messy point, I feel that it's very, um, it's very sad to watch something that could have been so amazing um, crash and burn so hard. And I think the biggest title of, of them all that she did not do was be a good leader and a good listener, and um, she chose to name off all these extra things that she was doing, but failed to um, tell everyone that I was not only first an assistant to the group, I was assisting her, I was making phone calls, I was getting us bookings, I was, uh, you know, doing everything possible to get this group up and going. And in the three months that I was in the group, there was a big jump in our fans. So I really don't appreciate um, the fact that she would go around and pretty much say that none of us did anything or that we were all lazy or, you know, that, that you know, we didn't want to do anything in the group because we all did a lot in the group. Whether one person did more than the other, we all did a lot. Um, everything that we did reflects on her so I could see how it would become stressful for her. But at the end of the situation and at the end of, you know, the entire blow up and everything, none of it was ever really appreciated and none of it was ever really um, acknowledged uh, from her. You know, when none of us felt like we were doing anything right, none of us felt like we were ever good enough or talented enough or encouraged to, to go further or, go, or do more than what we were doing. And that to me is very, very sad. And, and it took me a while to really get out of that funk of, was I not good enough or did I not really do what I was supposed to be doing? But I realized that it wasn't me. It wasn't me at all. You know, you have three girls that all have one common problem. Um, and these three girls never had a problem with each other. They all had a problem with this one person. And, you know, to me, that speaks for itself. Um, I don't even know how many ex-members of the Secret Girls have left or supposedly had problems uh, with their scheduling or whatever happened, but none of it makes sense to me. Uh, that many girls don't just leave a group without there being one common problem. And, you know, that's pretty much all ha I have to say for that. You know, what it came down to is that Elite, Jasmine, and myself were all bullied um, while we were in the group. We all experienced some form of body shaming. Um, our, our only thing that we can sit here and open, own up to is that, yes, we, we did make comments about our leader being older than we are. We did make comments about our leader being botched and, and all these things. But you, you guys have to understand that when you're put in so much pressure um, with bullying and body shaming, you have no choice but to kind of stand up for yourself and throw that, that same, uh, that same you know, 
uh, level of comments back to that person. You know, it was never, we, we never said these things because we wanted to hurt this person in any way. Um, however, we all did experience forms of bullying and uh, body shaming within the group, uh, which, which made us feel very insecure um, at times, uh, whether it was, um, you know, my issue with uh, weight or Elite's issue with uh, her body image or, you know, Jasmine's dancing, um, but it never was any kind of um, encouraging uh, words of wisdom. It was never, um, you know, um, it was never constructive criticism. Um, and here we are left behind. And, you know, once, once I chose to delete this person and once the group was over, um, I went back to my normal life. Um, she chose to block all of us and, and delete the rest of us. Um, and kind of throw us aside like we didn't really matter. You know, we weren't as talented as she wanted anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the true, the true, you know, purpose of us making uh, these statements was pretty much just to defend ourselves and to really tell the public that we are not, you know, just these weak girls that would let somebody walk all over us. We are, in fact, very strong and very talented um you know as far as the future goes like i said we never stopped working never stopped working and that's pretty much all i can say on that um as far as my future and where i'm going i uh, am currently working on a tv show based out of louisville um and you know i'm pursuing my acting career i'm doing a couple solo stuff uh, with music, um, and then we have another project that we're working on, and that's that. You know, I said it from the very beginning, if it's not making me money, I don't want to be involved. And this project, in fact, put me in debt, and towards the end, I just didn't want to be involved, you know, not not being paid, you know, what I deserved, um, not being paid what I was being promised. Um, it all got to me, and... I'm very glad things happened the way that they did. I'm very glad that things happened the way they did. And that's, that's all that I can say on that. Um, I wish everyone the best. I really hope that everyone makes it in whatever it is that they choose to do. Um, you know, and that's that. One person can doubt me, but um, my name is not... Uh, one that you throw down and you instantly think, oh, this person is a bad person or this person is difficult to work with. Oh, uh, this person is a diva. Um, you can drop my name anywhere and I promise you that that will never come out of someone's mouth. Unlike our leader, which is uh, another reason why we didn't get ahead as far as we did. Because nobody really wanted to work with us. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, I wish everyone the best, and I hope that everyone succeeds in everything that they're doing. And um, aside from that, I just want to say that if uh, we are not friends, please keep my name out of your mouth, and we'll be good. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, hearing my side of the story, and um, stay tuned, because like I've said about three times now, we never stopped working. We will never know the secret behind the secret girls, but you know, yes, we did try. Tonight. So, moving on. <laughs> so, moving on. Um, you wanted to say something to um, Miss Chrissy? Um, yeah. Speak your mind, girl. <laughs> yeah, speak your mind. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath and speak your mind. <laughs> Go ahead. So, like I mentioned earlier, there was, you know, an altercation that you might... Why don't we show an excerpt of that uh -huh. real quick? Let's just show an, show an excerpt to some of you people that are not familiar. And keep in mind, before you judge, before seeing this video, just know you don't know all the facts. Mm -hmm and that there was actually more before that happened that wasn't recorded.
the cell phone video from a wild scene on an A train. Police tonight looking for a well-dressed woman who they say suddenly slashed two people on a Brooklyn train. Here's CBS 2's Dave Carlin. This smartphone video shows a stylish suspect riding an A train in Brooklyn around 7 p.m. Friday in a yellow tailored coat, accessorized with a big red bag, movie star sunglasses, and a razor that you see she is not afraid to use. The two minute, 15 second video does not show the beginning of a heated conversation between strangers. It took this sudden violent turn southbound between J Street and Nostrand Avenue. The woman lunges with the razor at the man she's been arguing with. Shut up. Hi, I'm used to camera. Now, what I want to say is that I can't, you know, say too much, but what I do want to say is that, like I said before, there was a lot that happened before that that was directed towards me physically um, that wasn't recorded. And um, I'm going through a lot right now. It's been a rough couple of weeks. I was incarcerated at Rikers for two weeks, and there was a bail fund fundraiser from community organizers, and I would like to thank everyone who supported and who got me to where I am right now. Over 270 contributors, and the bell was made in less than 36 hours, I believe. So I'm very how much is the bell? Oh, wow. Um, I'm on bell spot. It was 20,000, so Whoa. I don't know how much. Okay. I what think it's like a chunk? percentage that. But I think it's a percentage that goes like with right. Yeah, right. The whole right. Thing Isn't it funny when just when you think the community is paying, for, right. is paying it, they yeah. Kind of, yeah. But I mean, you, a girl, you went viral, honey, on a whole different level. So you know, it's not like it was you were just some random girl that we needed to come and get. You know. Yeah, you know? And that's the first time ever that the media didn't get one of the girls' tea. Oh, because yes, girl, I was basically. That's real oh, yes. Bitch, when I saw. Bitch, okay, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the tea. I, I, I would see it like on different people's pages and everything, and I was just like, ooh. That's one of my sisters, right? Well, I, I just think that at first, I, just, I was just thinking that, why is this supermodel cutting people on the train? Bitch, that and, You know, yeah, allegedly. 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 But allegedly. I did not get her tea. Allegedly, and I then I start reading the comments and someone, that's a queen. And I start getting in and getting in, and I'm like, Whoa, I didn't get her teeth because it, all the news reports were saying woman, female, fashionista, yeah. the fashionista. That was the most compliments you could ever get. It was yeah, because no one was getting your teeth. It was everything. <laughs> when, I, when I was reading it, it said movie shade, uh, what, movie star sunglasses and very stylish. She was sitting on that train. You were. I was just was. sitting on that train. Was. I was living. But. Okay. <laughs> so, and I. I was like torn. I was torn with the whole video because from what we saw, I was just like, okay, this girl's just losing her mind. Trans or not, this bitch is just losing her mind. This is before you know all the facts. This is before, well, I still don't know the facts. Mm -hmm. But, um. But the truth was I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm also a uh, trans. Right. I'm, I'm a trans correspondent for the radio show that you did the interview, oh, the audition. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so I was like listening to what was going on or whatever, and I was just like, wow. However, however, I feel that you really wild out towards the end, and I didn't understand what was going on. But however, I just really celebrated the fact that she said, I'm not going to be a victim. And that part, I feel like all the girls across the globe should have that mentality. I never tell really yourself. Bitch, I was living. I, mean, <laughs> I was living on so many different levels. I was like, yes, Pink Panthers is in full of fucking facts. So what about Pink Panthers? Because I heard, I heard, overheard that you had this idea of getting the girls together to form a Pink Panther. Okay. So explain to the viewers. So I want on a positive, more on a positive note of the Pink Panthers. Oh, um, what the Pink Panthers? What will they be? We'll just be a, a group of the girls. You gotta be part of the girls. You can't just be a fan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and you know, that get together. You know how you have a lot of the girls like, oh, I'm trans, <laughs> and then you have the beard and the goatee. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to be a woman. Period. Yeah. You know. And with the sorry, tranny group, bear. And it's really <laughs> don't start nothing. I'm sorry. Don't start nothing. I'm just saying. You just you 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 you. you, you don't said you start didn't... nothing, and it won't be nothing. You said the girls. Okay. Well, those, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Those type of people. Okay. It's just, it's, I'm not, I, I may get backlash and I don't really care. It's just but get your life, life, girl. You know, know right. I can handle it, right. Okay. You know, the Pink Panthers is just set up for us to, like, be one and then be able to support each other on so many different levels. If I have to teach you how to box, 
then that's what we'll be doing in my apartment or at, at a gym or something, or some type of form of self defense. Because for the trans, for, for trans the trans, women. for the trans, for the trans girls, you know, and I'm 2016, 2017, and going. To, I'm just, I just don't want to read anymore about the girls just getting. I don't want to see any more videos of the girls getting beat and they're just oh and just no. So bitch, me, fight back, and this is what the Pink Panthers stand for. It's a little bitch, you can't. You gotta I, look at uh, something. Uh, we're gonna meet uh, up. Uh, we're uh, gonna uh, be uh, done, uh, painted uh, together, uh, you know, and and, and we'll and just the size of the park right. right. You know, and if anyone says anything while we're together, bitch, you're going to get. <laughs> Bottom line, you are really going to come together and you're going to learn a lesson that night. So basically like the way Al Sharpton shows up to um, when when someone gets shot, basically the trans girls show up. Pink Panthers. I have yeah. a question. Okay. Um, I'm like a group. Like a music group. I think it's I think it's um I think it's a cute idea. Mm -hmm. But don't you think, you know, that's kind of promoting violence. It's one thing to defend yourself and to get it together. It's another thing, you know, when it's a group of girls. Ying ying gang, ying ying gang. Like you're right, you're, you're, you're right. right. But but on top of that, this is not the world we live in. The world we live in, I can be an act of violence, a simple act of violence from the moment I walk out of this door. And that's just the world we live in. And being trans, we're clearly within these last couple of years have been the act of violence. Okay. So for you to say, oh, you know, are we promoting violence? Maybe you girls are not, but I'm promoting self-defense. I'm promoting don't get killed. I'm promoting right. don't get beat senseless. You know, it, like, just be prepared. Okay, well what I mean is, is that if we notice, uh, the girls are a lot quieter into themselves when they're by themselves. But if you put a, if you put a bunch of girls, you know, if you put us with a bunch of like, but maybe three, four other girls, mm -hmm. and anybody can just sneeze the wrong way. What'd you say? What? Mm -hmm. What? Get your ass beat. What? There are, there are some girls that are doing sex work, and you know they're usually in a hotel, and um, basically a motel inn or a super eight, and they don't know who they're opening their doors to, and they could be in that situation any moment, and they might not know how to react to it. Basically, it's a, a right, John, it's to give a John you a heart. Wrong. How I got my heart so to because I have a whole bunch of brothers mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of male cousins, and then mm -hmm. how I grew up, we were just that. Close. Yeah, and there's some no matter what, that. right? No matter what the situation was, no matter how guilty I was in the situation, my family was there for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and in the midst of that, and in return, I was there for them. And what that taught me was how to be brave, mm -hmm. with or without them. Mm -hmm. Because they they live in Eastern Long Island. I'm in New York City. I still walk through these streets like what? <laughs> I'm not looking for it. I would rather not go through any of that. But it will happen, and it can happen. What I'm saying is, be prepared. Mm -hmm. I just, even if it's mace, even if it's a, a taser gun, anything. I'm sorry. Then I'm gonna end up on snap. She said you're gonna end up on snap. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was watching. See, that's how I feel. That's how I feel about her. It messed up my head. That's but a lot of transsexuals suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. That's too. I, but what I want to say is, like, I don't think like. I do think that you should defend yourself. I do believe in that. Um, what I don't want people to think is just that, like, that transgenders, women just go out here just looking for, you know, trouble. Yeah. Some do, of course, but science tells us that it's not true, though. Yeah, like yeah, it's so. you know, it's a, it's a constant battle, like every day. It's a constant struggle just to get through the day. You don't know like what's gonna happen, and it's scary. Yeah, and you know. With me, even now, like the fact that I'm out and stuff like that, like I've received numerous death threats. Mm. And, yeah, numerous death threats. People, you know, do recognize me all over. From people in the community or straight, like walking down the street. Every, like, it's, but do you, you ever feel like your safety is in jeopardy? I, I actually have um, two escorts that was appointed to me, and um, they're in Chicago right now. And we don't. So um, they, but basically, for people that don't know yeah. that the actual in the, in the situation, the the person or persons you got into altercation with, they refused treatment. So with that being said, how serious and how severe was it, really? Well, they, and and what did these women like? Why did they have to arrest her? Because from what I, no, what no, no, I was no, reading, no, 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 she she wasn't arrested. She turned herself she in. She turned herself in. So that's well, why when, when, I you turn, when you turned yourself in, that means they were looking for you. you if they're no, not looking means, for you, no. no, 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 no. I know the law, honey. If you if they're not looking for you, you just can't go up to the preset and be like, here I am, and they're gonna take you in. Well, and they're not looking for no, you. No, that it was it. It was, you know, a warrant out. Um, a lot of the media, I can say, hyped up a lot of the situation. They sensationalized it. 
Um, yeah, they really did, and they made me out to look like the bad person. The bad person, of course, yeah. because because uh, sometimes when the camera starts rolling, people see that they start acting a different way. Right. Like someone could be antagonizing someone, and then all of a sudden they see that iPhone rolling and that one, then they want to act like, oh, what are you doing? Leave me alone. They become quick victims. Maybe they, they, they turn it around. You, you try to like don't know what's going on. Putting you in your place, and now you're the victim. Right. I hate people and, like that. Go away. And so Stop. that's like pretty much. You know what kind of happened, or what did happen. But like I said, I can't talk too much about it. But what I can talk about is like what's going on now, and everything. Like things are a little bit hard. I'm encouraged to like stay in the house. I'm not really even supposed to be out without my escort, and I can't work at the moment. And I have, I do have a big support system. Um, there's actually a fundraiser that's been started. It's a survival fund. Um, and I would like to ask everyone if they can to donate. Um, Do you have a link for that? Well, you can find it on my Facebook, which is Chrissy we, we Jackson. We can actually put the link. Can you? Yeah. We're going to put the link so right what's your here. Facebook, so the Facebook? Um, my Facebook is Chrissy Jackson, C H R I S S Y. And Jackson. make sure you say Tea Time Set You. As you <laughs> <laughs> Add me and, you know, support. <laughs> And um, yeah, it's basically it's a really, really, really rough time. But um, thank I'm you again for joining us for thank you. and yeah. being able to do this because a lot of people there was there was girls in the community that were actually figures in the community were just judging and you know those are the kind of girls that we don't want to you know promote and, or those are the kind of girls we want to stay away from when they don't know the situation. So. We know they're beautiful. But, but, the, but the reality, like, Hello, no, no, but the reality, I I will, there's a lot of girls in the world that are not as beautiful, and it's just the realness, <laughs> right? And, I'm not, and it's really not, no, no, no. All, all joke aside, I'm not being. <laughs> However, even when you're beautiful, you go through. You clearly know you were sitting that night. You know you go through. You go through a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, you know you were sitting, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. I'm like, uh, right, bitch. She told the camera to catch me on my. Good right, 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 right. You know you look good when you tell the bitch to catch me on my good side. It's over here. <laughs> right, but you know, at the same token, honey, like it's just. This is our reality. Mm -hmm. Our reality is that we're going to be attacked. We're going to be read for filth. We're going to be in this situation. So like you had said a few minutes ago, we, we're we not we're not going to know. You never know what's going to happen when you walk out your door. You know what I mean? And it's scary. And it is scary. And that's why I tell the girls, be be safe. Fuck your realness, bitch. Cause, yeah, cause you know what I mean? Like, just, girls, you know, have something. That looks like real is real. And, you know, something still happens to them. It's mm -hmm. just, you just really have to be careful. You have to always watch your back and always. defend yourself. Always. I notice that the girls that look beautiful get attacked more. More. I noticed that too. And I think, yeah, yeah. I think it's because it plays like the, the tricks. Real okay. or and, and beautiful get attacked more. I know. Because it plays Cause tricks I, on the mind. And what hasn't know. happened to Sydney Star yet? <laughs> well, well, I'm sure that she has a lot of time. I was thinking out loud. I'm sorry. No, she, no, she, no, 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 no. Actually, that she actually has to have been attacked. Because, no, no offense to so her, Sydney Star. Because she kind of acts like a victim. How? Actually, she, she, she acts like a like victim. She acts like she's very like loud and very like, oh, who's gonna she fuck me? Mm -hmm. um, who wants it? Like, trash. I work the streets, I had to trash. go out to the. Um, trash. Before, that the thank you. Rapper? Before, the yeah. rapper. Sydney yeah. Star. Listen, uh -huh. the trash. only thing I, I can say about that, and this is why I believe, I believe the only reason she has not had sex with all the celebrities that she loves girls. Because no, she has a mouth. She, it's oh. not even about it. She has a mouth. And people, no, boys and the world, boy, like men, and the world, they talk just as much as women. So when you get that, yeah, I suck Tiger's dick and all this and, and getting over the shit. Tiger Jenner is not having that. <laughs> Next topic. But, uh, <laughs> Um, no, but just I only had to say what I had to say because every time you go on the radio, you like to throw me under the bus. Really? So what what is that? Mm. And that's the real tea. But wait a minute, wait a minute. So basically, what what is that team, Miss Fox Giselle? Wait, 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 let me do it. Sydney Star, if you're ever in the New York area. No, well, let her let her explain no, herself. So what happened? So for those who don't if know, if you want more info, you need to go to my blog. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out so like I'm about to say, Miss Sydney Star, like once again, darling, if you're ever in the New York area, please come have a seat with us. We'd love to talk to you. <laughs> That's gonna be explosive. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> so on that note. I would like to thank everyone for having me here. 
all of you are beautiful and I'm glad I came. Thank you for coming. Jaija? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, do you have anything? She wants to wrap up now. Oh, we're wrapping up right now. I feel like we just started. Okay, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I don't feel like I don't want to work now. Right. <laughs> Girls, protect yourselves. Oh. No matter how the world perceives you afterwards, I'd rather live to be a villain, but bitch, I'm living. Amen. You feel me? Live. Listen, listen. I don't want. I don't want us to be any more victims. 2016, 2017, and forever. So whatever you have to do to live and survive. I'd rather half kill you and go to jail and have the next day to another chance to survive, another chance I'd rather fight the next day again versus just be dead and be forgotten about. You know what I mean? So yeah. girls, protect yourselves. Whatever it is that means to you, do it. <laughs> and love and hashtag fantasy fulfilled. I just want to say return to thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that um, <laughs> As trans women, we should continue not to put ourselves in positions where we are being victimized. And basically, you know, um, try to love one another, you know. Mm. Love one another. Share it. Share it. Share, share, yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and respect and each other. Exactly. And we're exactly. all sisters. We're all sisters. <laughs> you know, you, even if we don't like each other. <laughs> the girls do like to separate each other between she's hard, she got a lot of silicone, she got no surge, and that's the real. But all we have the same. But half they all have the same boy. Right, but you know it's the same boy. Never mind. Exactly. Also, like the same. Just go through all the girls. I'm so excited because I'm going to get my bags in two months. All right. Congratulations. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use them. It's gonna hurt. It's it. It's really for how long? A couple days. Couple yeah. days. Oh, like a week. It's just it, it goes from the first three days of being pain, and yeah. then after that's just uncomfortable. Okay. Especially like you don't have much going on. So, <laughs> and I was in the same. I'm not reading. I was in the same situation, <laughs> and I went from not much going on to a D cup, and it was just. Ooh. Well, they yeah. said they're gonna give me a C cup. I don't know if I can say his name. You can say his name. Doctor Paul White. Hi. Um, he's gonna he's on Fifth Avenue, and I heard he's amazing. He hasn't worked with me yet, but he will be. So. That's All right. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm just nervous. That's that So, um, thank you all for coming here. Fox is telling me we have to cut it short. Okay. Um, it's not in the budget to follow. Oh. Control. It's not in the budget to over talk. So, um, <laughs> it's not in the budget to go over the time when we. Thank you, everyone, for being here, and um, thank you, uh, uh, thank you to the fans for watching once again. We appreciate your comments and all your suggestions. So, um, Gia, how do we close it off? Oh, 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 we, we, really, we didn't get anything. Oh, yeah, from you, sis, sis, you. Do you have anything in closing you want to say? <laughs> um, like, uh, you know how the, the black girls have it hard? Mm -hmm. Everybody has it hard, that's the reality. And the, the reality is that everybody needs to get together. And maybe that's what Mariah was trying to say, but she just didn't word it correctly. Yeah. You know, we'll she has a lot of, of that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But she has a lot of, like, I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's been a great show, you guys. We had fun. Real quick, 31st of March, Transgender Visibility, uh, National Transgender Visi uh, Day of Visibility. First annual wig drag. First annual wig drag, tea time with the girls, man made, meet and greet, be there or be square or get read by Ms. Gia. Um, and remember, like we always say, if you can't be yourself, if you can't be real, at least be real, um, with, yourself. Real with yourself. 